Hello friends. Income tax has always been a complex and a daunting topic for the common man. Most of us do not know how income tax is being calculated. What do you mean by deductions? What do you mean by taxable income? How much says is applied? What are the different tax levels? So to simplify things, we have tried explaining how to calculate income tax in four simple steps in this video. Not only that, to make things crystal clear, we have taken three examples of three different people at different income brackets and we have shown how to compute income tax for each of them. Come, let's go to the video. Before we start, a brief disclaimer, we are not tax experts. This video is being put up for education and awareness purposes. Now, what are the steps in computing income tax? Number one, you will have to identify income from all your sources. For most of us, the major source of income is salary. In addition to that, you may have interest from fixed deposits or you may have a property which you have rented out. So you'll have to first compute your income from all the sources. Second, from the total income, you will have to calculate the net taxable income. Let's say your total income is 10 lakhs. It doesn't mean that you'll have to pay tax on the entire 10 lakhs. There are some exemptions and deductions that you can avail that reduce your total income to a smaller amount. And that we call it a net taxable income. So once you calculate the net taxable income, you need to look at the income tax slabs defined by government of India and you'll have to uh, compute tax according to the tax rates in each of the slabs. And number four, after you calculate the income tax, you will have to make some adjustments. For instance, you may have to apply CES. Uh, if your income, if your total taxable income is less than five lakhs, you may have to take a rebate. So with this, your income tax computation will be complete. Now let's understand each of the steps in detail. Number one identifying income from all the sources for an individual these these could be the potential sources of income number one the major component is your salary number two if you're having your own property and you're renting it out the rent from the property is uh, is another uh, income source for you number three if you have fixed deposits or savings bank account or the interest from those accounts is considered an income Number four, people who are doing business over and above their uh, uh, employment, it is an additional source of income. Number five, if you own stocks or gold and if you sell it off, you, if you sell off your property, there will be some capital gains out of it. That is also considered an income. Now, with this, let's move to step two. Now, how to compute this net taxable income from your total income? Now, let's take an example. Let's say someone's total gross salary is 7 lakhs. First step, you will have to remove some of the exemptions like your house rent allowance, some LTA and all that. With this, your uh, gross salary minus exemptions become 6 lakhs, 50,000 rupees. Now, let's add the income from all the other sources. For instance, let's take someone has a uh, uh, interest from deposits say around 15,000 and uh, let's say they have rented out their property and they're earning a in rent of 60,000. So the total income from other sources becomes 75,000. So net the total taxable income for this individual becomes 7 lakh 25,000. 650,000 plus 75,000 becomes 7 lakh 25,000. Now the individual can claim some deductions. What are those? So these deductions are primarily defined in section 80. The major deduction is in section 80C where you can claim up to 1.5 lakhs of deduction. So you, if you want to claim deduction via 80C, you will have to invest in the following. Number one, employee provident fund. Number two, public provident fund. Number three, LSS. Number four, term insurance paid on your uh, term insurance premium paid. Number five, if you have a housing loan, the principal amount repayment can be claimed under 80C. In addition to that, there are some other sections. We'll look at some of them. Section D, if you are paying a premium for your health insurance for you and your parents, you can claim a deduction from that. So the amount depends on the age of yourself, your family and your, fa your parents. Next, if you are having inter education loan, the interest paid on education loan is uh, can be deducted from your total uh, taxable income and uh, you can claim benefit on that. Now, let's take in this example, let's say this person has a total deductions of 1 lakh out of 1.5 lakhs. He can, let's say he can claim 1 lakh. Now, his net taxable income becomes 6 lakhs 25,000. So, this person 
has to can uh, compute his income tax on this net taxable income which is 6 lakh 25000 okay now you have computed net taxable income now let's look at the tax laps so this person had the total net taxable income is 6 lakh 25000 so government of india has defined the tax laps for old regime like this for the first 2.5 lakhs there is no tax if someone is having an income between 2.5 to 5 lakhs there is a 5% income tax 5 to 10 lakhs you have 20% in our example the concerned individual has a total taxable net taxable income of 6 lakh 25000 so that person will come in this bracket about 10 lakhs you have to pay 30% income tax okay once you compute this income tax you will have to make some adjustments what are those number 1 if your net taxable income is less than 5 lakhs you can claim the rebate on the income tax that you paid up to 12,500 rupees. If your income is more than 50 lakh, you may have to pay a surcharge on your income tax. For 50 lakhs to 1 lakh, it's 10%, 1 crore to 2 crore, uh, 50 lakhs to 1 crore, it's 10%, for, from 1 crore to 2 crore, it's 15%. I have put up a link here. You can look at uh, Income Tax India website and you can understand the surcharges. Number three. So you, on your income tax, you'll have to apply a set of 4%. This 4% is applied on your income tax, net income tax payable uh, for health and education says. Now, to make things very clear, let's look at three examples. Number one, Mr. Raja, who's working in a bank and he's uh, earning a annual salary of 7 lakhs. Number two, Pavitra, a software engineer who's earning a annual salary of 12 lakhs and number three Karthik a project manager who's earning 20 lakh per annum example one Raja is earning an annual salary of 7 lakhs let's say he lives in a rented house and he can claim a HR exemption of 75,000 so we will subtract the 75,000 from 7 lakh in addition there is a standard deduction under section 16a that is applicable so we subtract this 50,000 also from the total gross salary uh, over and above his salary salary let's say raja has fixed deposit in the bank and he earns interest out of it so we will have to add this 25,000 to the 7 lakh so net net his total taxable income becomes 7 lakhs minus 75,000 minus 50,000 plus 25,000 so 6 lakhs let us say raja has invested in epf and ppf put together for a total amount of 1 lakh so he can claim deductions under this section in addition raja has obtained an insurance for himself and his family by paying a premium of 10000 rupees he can claim deduction under section 80d so in this scenario raja's net taxable income becomes 4 lakh 90000 which is 6 lakhs minus 1.1 lakhs which is 4 lakh 90,000 now let us calculate how much of income tax Raja needs to pay just to refresh your memory I'm showing the tax labs again Raja comes under this tax bracket of uh, 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 2.5 to 5 lakhs where he needs to pay 5% in 5% uh, uh, income tax now let's break Raja's salary that 4 lakh 90,000 into two slabs for the first 2.5 lakhs, there is no income tax. For the next 2.5 lakhs, in this case, it's 2.4 lakhs as the salary is 4.9 lakhs. He needs to pay a 5% on this 2.4 lakhs, which is 12,000. Now, wait. There is a section 87A where people with less than 5 lakh of net taxable income can claim rebate on the income tax. So, in this case, because of the section 87A, Raja does not need to pay any income tax. His 12,000 uh, income tax will be, uh, uh, can be claimed under rebate, but he needs to file income tax returns. Now, let's look at the second example of Pavitra. Pavitra has a gross total salary of 12 lakh per annum. Let us say, Pavitra is also staying in a a rented accommodation where she can claim a HRA exemption of 75,000. So, how to compute HRA exemption? I have put up a video separately. You can have a look at it. Uh, I have put up the link in the description. Next, the standard deduction under 16 uh, IA also applies to Pavitra. So, we subtract this 50,000 as well. Let us say Pavitra also has some fixed deposit and she is earning around 25,000 as uh, interest from those fixed deposits. Now, 
Pavitra's total taxable income will be 12,000 minus 75,000 minus 50,000 plus 25,000 which is 11 lakhs. Let us say Pavitra has smartly invested in employee provident fund and um, public provident fund to a total amount of 160,000 but she cannot claim deduction for the entire amount. So the maximum amount which with which she can claim is 150,000. In addition, Pavitra has taken a medical insurance for herself and his family for 25,000 uh, by paying 25,000 rupee premium and she has also paid a 35,000 health insurance premium for her parents. Assuming her parents are not senior citizen, she cannot claim deduction for the entire 60,000. For herself and family, she can claim 25,000 and for her parents, non-senior citizen parents, she can claim 25,000. So, the total deduction which she can claim under ATD is 50,000 here. So now, Pavitra's net taxable income becomes 9 lakh from 11 lakh. 11 lakh minus 150,000 minus 50,000, so 9, 9 lakh. Now, how to compute income tax for Pavitra? Now, here we break this uh, Pavitra's income into three slabs. First slab, for the first two, 2.5 lakhs, there is no income tax. For the next 5 lakhs, uh, for the next 2.5 lakhs, there is 2.5 lakhs to 5 lakhs, there is a uh, 25 percent income tax and from 5 lakh till 9 lakh till 10 lakh in this case since her taxable income is 9 lakh she needs to pay around 20 percent income tax so pavitra's total income tax is 2.5 lakhs into 5 percent uh, 12,500 4 lakh into 20 percent which is 80,000 so this is the total amount of tax that pavitra needs to pay wait as the total income tax is computed as 92,500, you need to apply a cess of 4%. So, the total income tax that Pavitra needs to pay becomes 96,200. Now, I think things would have been a little more clearer. Let's move to the next income bracket of Karthik. Karthik, who is a project manager, has a salary of around 20 lakh per annum. Let us say, Karthik stays in a bigger house and he's paying higher rent and his HR exemption is also very high. So let's take 1.5 lakhs for example. He also has that standard deduction 50,000 applicable. So we subtract that as well. Let us say Karthik has a uh, own house from in a different city and he is earning rent from that. In addition, he also has interest from bank deposit. Let's assume that that income which he is getting is around 75,000. So Karthik's total taxable income becomes 20 lakhs minus 1.5 lakhs minus 50,000 plus 75,000 which is 18 lakhs 75,000. Now, Karthik has also invested around 2 lakhs in public provident fund and em employee provident fund. But he can claim only up till 1.5 lakhs of deduction under ATC. In addition, Karthik has paid a medical insurance for himself and his family for around 25,000 and his parents are senior citizens. So, they, uh, the health insurance costs a little on the higher side. So, he has paid a higher uh, health insurance premium of around 65,000. In this case, as his parents are senior citizens, Karthik can claim a deduction of up to 50,000 only for the health insurance premium paid for his parents. So, the total deductions which Karthik can claim under ATD is 25,000 plus 50,000, 75,000. Now, the net taxable income for Karthik becomes 18.75 lakhs minus 1.5 lakhs minus 75,000 which is 16.5 lakhs. Now, let us compute income tax for Karthik. Here, we will break his total income into 4 slabs. For the first 2.5 lakhs, there is no income tax. 2.5 to 5 lakhs, he needs to pay 5% income tax. 5 to 10 lakhs, he needs to pay 20% income tax and about 10 lakhs, he needs to pay 30% income tax. Karthik's salary about 10 lakhs is around 6.5 lakhs as his total taxable income is 16.5 lakhs. Now, the net income, the net uh, income tax that he needs to pay is 12,500 uh, 12, plus 1 lakh plus 30% of 6.5 lakhs which is 1.95 lakhs which is coming to a total of 3,7500. Here also we need to apply a cess of 4% and the total income tax becomes 3,19,800 for Karthik. Now I think with these three examples you would be very clear on how to compute income tax. In the next video I will give some tips on how to save income tax uh, based on various sections. If you like this video 
please uh, hit the like button if you think it has been very useful for you please feel free to share it with your friends and relatives and do not forget to uh, subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon thanks for watching